Ghost of Tsushima is a love letter to Japanese samurai films of the past. It blends historical fiction with gorgeous views and tight gameplay. You are given all the tools to fulfill the lone wolf fantasy in medieval Japan and wage your war against the greatest conquerors in history. But where the game stands out is in its combat, how it achieves a perfect balance of approachability and difficulty surpassing its contemporaries in the genre. Often it is said that most combat systems in action games today are derivatives of the Arkham games, but we could go even further, looking at the Prince of Persia trilogy on the console generation before that, and on and on. If that's something you want us to dive into in another video, let us know in the comments. Ghost of Tsushima is similar in presentation, but it's working on a higher level. Let's take a closer look at the combat. The player is mostly using a katana to dispatch enemies head-on, but your enemy weapons will vary. Aside from a light and strong attack, you are given a sidestep, which can be employed at any direction, a block, and a parry. While in combat, you are not locked into any physical boundaries, as you can run away, climb to higher ground, or an advantageous position to thin out your attackers. Familiar to games in the genre, your enemies will surround you and take turns striking at you, but the main difference is that they break your rhythm and even their own. If we look back at the Arkham games, you will eventually find that as the combo meter rises, Batman somehow finds himself whipping from enemy to enemy at very high speeds. The inputs start to feel more like a rhythm game, where you are dictating the direction of the action and avoiding dangers. A feature it shares with the Insomniac Spider-Man games is that your combo meter plays a role giving you takedown attacks to dispatch enemies quickly. But generally, Peter Parker is more attuned to disabling his opponents before taking them head on. For Jin Sakai, it's a bit more grounded. Rushing forward on the offensive can score some hits, but the enemies will usually dictate the flow of combat and take advantage of your open guard. They can turn the tide by pushing forward heavily armored and shielded enemies to slow you, or pick you off from afar with arrows, forcing a defensive choice on the player end. They will come at you with their own combination attacks, and other enemies will not wait for them to finish. Now, you have ninja tools to even the playing field in a pinch, like kunai and smoke bombs, but as your enemies become stronger and fully armored, you will have to rely on your swordsmanship and battlefield mastery to find victory. There are some areas where the gameplay falls a little flat for me. Archery is, you know, just fine. It's not doing anything crazy special, and it's not terribly useful in combat until highly upgraded, outside of dispatching other lightly armored archers at a distance and aiding in stealth. Stealth in general is a bit lackluster. You get your detective spidey eagle vision to see through walls and some violent stealth kill animations, but it's not doing anything that stands out in the genre. But to understand why this is a genre defining game is to look past those mechanics and kind of look at the big picture, see it all in motion. When the player is in the thick of it, what you really have to master is timing, spacing, and position. Sidestepping, reading your opponents, and leading them to more favorable positions is the path to mastery. Separating your opponents to take them on one at a time is a viable strategy with some thoughtful planning. Now of course, you can just be a total badass and take them all on from inside the circle. But as the difficulty spikes, the enemy will become relentless and give you little time to react and recover. Particularly on the highest difficulties, Strategy is important. Genre defining is a bold statement, but I think it holds because it meets two criteria. The first is that it's simple to understand. Combat is not too difficult to master, but it's very easy to employ, and it varies with each encounter. The game gives you ample opportunity to practice and doesn't penalize you for it. It doesn't have the depth of mechanics in, say, a Monster Hunter game, 
but it also isn't punishingly difficult like a Souls game. It's very achievable. It's balanced in a way that doesn't hold you back, but actively keeps you engaged. Any failed combat scenario can be learned from, and different strategies enacted. It's practical to a range of skill levels, and that's really important when you have a story to tell. It doesn't get in the way. The second criteria that it meets is that it's a beautiful game, and we cannot forget that this is a visual medium. This game cannot be called anything other than cinematic. And I'm not just talking about the Kurosawa mode that they added, but even that is a hint. They really paid attention to presentation, how things look, how things feel, and how things move. Everything's alive all the time. The range of colors is superb, and the fluidity of the animation is fantastic. It is a joy to watch a high-skilled player clear out waves of enemies and dictate their position, as if on a chessboard. Mastering the environment is a treat when your world is this vibrant. Actions feel seamless and indulge in the subtle flair of kick-ass samurai cinema. What makes a game great is always a hard concept to pin down. Ghost of Tsushima stands out because it strikes a balance in difficulty, presentation, and action. It fulfills its promise to the player to put them in the shoes of a great warrior in a beautiful land and uses the cultural lens of cinematic history to carve out its space at the top of the genre. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. If you disagree or think I'm onto something, let us know in the comments. Catch you all in the next one.